episode three of our mini series on single family offices. Today, I'm joined by Kat Zagati yet again. Kat, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. So after having touched on the basics and uh, the advantage of a single family office, uh, what are we covering today? Okay, so I've, I've got an interesting question for you today, Jan. Family business, family holding, and family office. I want to know what are the differences. Okay, and there's a lot of uh, mix up between the three. So let's try to uh, be pragmatic here. Mm -hmm. Before we tap in the differences, let's look at the common feature. The common feature, obviously, is the family. So they are all uh, they all involve family members to an extent. They all come from the families, and often they start by being embedded one into the other. For example, you have a common uh, you have a family business with a family holding at the top, and the SFO will start within this organization. But over time, they are likely to be uh, split segregated. So uh, to me, the, the differences, uh, they can be summarized this way. Maybe we look at the type, that means mm -hmm. active or passive. You can look at the activity, and then you can look at the objectives of each entity. So if I look at a, a family business, uh, this is an active entity. So a family business in that is very similar to a family office. They are both active entity. The business of the SFO is to actually focus strictly on the family, but it's a real business. It's uh, uh, it is staffed and there's an activity going on, etc. A family holding, on the other hand, is likely to be almost strictly a passive structure aimed at consolidating assets. So here you can already see a difference in the type active or passive. Then you have another difference, which is the activity that uh, uh, each concept uh, will undertake. So a, a family business here uh, may have a wide range of different business lines. You can pick service, trade, manufacturing, whatever. Uh, the activity of an SFO is, will also be something, but uh, slightly different. The family office is likely to be focused on a selected menu of services that we have covered last week. Uh, mostly financial and or parafinancial and strictly provided to the family. Again, the holding passive entity, this one is likely to purely focus on consolidation, monitoring and generally ancillary management uh, of these underlying assets. And then we come uh, to the objectives of uh, these various verticals. So if I look at the family business, the key objective there is likely to be value creation and revenue generation over time uh, and as an active operator. The objective of a family holding are likely to be similar, but in that the holding is more likely to be a passive investor and not as an active operator in the underlying uh, structures. The family's holdings other objectives are likely to be the consolidation as well as the segregation of the different assets, different asset classes. The SFO, on the other hand, will aim at uh, institutionalizing the wealth management function of a family. But beware, because this is not set in stone. The objectives can and will likely change over time. So constant monitoring of what the family needs and adjustments uh, so that the, the SFO still meets the needs of the family at the times are key. Okay, I see. So I understood that the common feature among these three concepts is the family, as you said, and the differences will lie in the type, activity, and objectives of the entity, which can be active, passive, focused on provision of services to family, obviously, or purely holding, and so on. Correct? Exactly. I think okay. if we understood that, we are in yeah. the money. Yes. All right. Thanks, Ian. And again, for those of you who want to know more about SFOs, as I mentioned in our previous webcast, we do have a comprehensive fact sheet on this topic describing all options of SFOs available here in the UAE. And we are happy to share that with um, qualifying applicants. Thanks again for today.